Welcome back into the live stream today. Of course, we're going to be jumping into a lot of stablecoin news and also take a look, a little bit of a deeper look at Tether, how all this might play out here in the near future, and maybe how this could be affecting the greater crypto markets. That's what we're going to dive into. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Of course, we're going to do our back-to-back -back lives today. So um, this is kind of becoming a little bit of a schedule for us. We're trying to keep up with that. Uh, which is usually around 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, which is what you're doing now, and then uh, the 3 p.m., which is kind of our prime time piece. We'll be, we will be covering some Bitcoin news and also some Bitcoin sentiment update in the 3 o'clock, so make sure and stick around for that. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel, this is the first imperfect time to do it. Get in here because you're going to get notifications on all things crypto, tech, blockchain. This is really kind of what our channel covers. If you're new into crypto and you're trying to learn the kind of the, the first things, the first steps, uh, this is a great place to do it. You can, of course, go into our library. We're almost a thousand videos deep in there on crypto. So lots of stuff on almost every project and probably every topic that you've looked at around investing in crypto over the past uh, few years. So hopefully you guys can look in there and uh, take a look at some of those videos. Now, um, we always take questions at the end, so make sure and put your uh, Q&A over in the side chat. Uh, we'll try to get to as many as uh, we can, and I take quite a few of them, so not like a lot of shows who don't take a lot of them, so I do uh, jump into those. I want to go over to Tether's uh, current state of being first, and then we'll kind of flow through not only some of the news, but also some of the analysis of, of maybe some recommendations here of how Tether might play into and keep up with the onslaught they're taking right now in terms of an attack. So first I wanna take a look at overall market cap holding a 66 billion right there. We've got a little bit in terms of their reserves. Uh, you can kind of see a breakdown right here of, let me kind of zoom in on that one. Um, other investments include digital tokens, secured loans are still small part, corporate bonds and funds around 4%, and then cash and cash equivalent and other short-term deposit and commercial paper. For me, that's just, it's, it is um, very diverse, obviously, in that 85%. When you look at the breakdown of this, it gets into a very small percentage of treasury bills um, in non-US, and then a large percentage of US treasury, which is good. Uh, reverse purchase agreements, cash in the bank, not a great amount. Uh, money market, decent, and then commercial paper. Again, this is the one I think that everybody is concerned about because that's about 30% of that overall 85%, which is a large percentage of their um, their current condition. If you kind of compare that to their current balances, let's take a look here. Um, and these are some of the exposed right here that you look at. So on ETH right there, 32 billion. You've got Tron in there, Solana. Avalanche and even Algorand that are uh, really kind of leading out their uh, their liquidity issues um, around Tether. So this can play into what we've talked about in the industry is the contagion effect or the ripple effect uh, that starts to really kind of sweep through uh, potential issues around whether or not Tether can, one, hold on. And obviously we know or I feel like it's going to happen. You know, this is something I talked about last year is that Circle or USDC would be uh, successful in flipping Tether, and I was anticipating we would see it this summer, and I think uh, we might actually see that. So uh, the many ways that Tether leaves the stablecoin market, this is their own um, coverage. They, they do a few things in here. One thing that I wanted to uh, call attention to is that Tether is currently preparing itself to go through an audit with major accounting firm, one of the big 12 accounting firms, now, granted, this has been talked about before, but this, of course, is the key thing. If they do get audited from a major accounting firm and we find that uh, this is a, a nothing burger, uh, much like Paolo talks about uh, in some tweets we'll show you, then it could change the course of how Tether is looked at because Tether has a little bit of that ETH uh, feeling in the essence that it's been around the block, it's been here for quite some time, there's a lot of adoption, a ton of different uh, trading pairs that are utilized with Tether, along with a lot of different exchanges, uh, everything from international exchanges to even stages, exchanges here in the U.S. that really rely on use case of where Tether is as, as far as a stablecoin. 
The concern is, is that right now there's a little bit of pressure on Tether from the shorting side of things. If you look at this tweet from Paolo Ardoino, which is the uh, CTO over there uh, at Tether, I've been open about the attempts from some hedge funds that were trying to cause further panic on the market after the Terra Luna collapse. It really uh, seemed uh, from the beginning a coordinated attack with a new wave of FUD, trolls, armies, all, all etc. So he's, he's really looking at this, and this is not a guy that necessarily is going to get anything pulled over him, on him. He's very technical. He understands the markets, where the pressures come from, how these macros also play into this. It's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting statement from, uh, from him. If you look at some of the reporting on this, hedge funds reportedly shorting UST, uh, USDT uh, with hundreds of millions. This, of course, coming from the CTO, uh, Paolo. Uh, Wall Street Journal also reported on Monday, a n- growing number of hedge funds had opened up USDT short positions worth hundreds of millions of dollars in notional value. And this is with Genesis Global Trading, a leading crypto brokerage for professional investors. This is happening over the last month. A couple of things here. Leon Marshall talks a little bit about it. He's the institutional sales guy that is basically saying, yeah, this is happening. We're, we're seeing this occur. USDT collapse also affected Tether, Tether's governance token, Luna, uh, Terra's government token Luna and the cryptocurrency slumped to zero. This is a lot of what people are looking at as one of the indicators that really kind of started this domino effect to occur. Now, granted, this affected a whole lot of different areas of the industry, including what we saw with Celsius, what we could see with other trading exchanges out there. If you think about, and I'll talk about that in a second, of what Sam Bankman talked about in terms of uh, insolvency. There's some interesting things happening right now, or you could look at this as potential pure FUD that is trying to draw the overall market down for potential strategic investment entry. Some, and I think it's a little bit of both. I think there some of this, sometimes smoke, there's fire kind of scenarios. These kind of things are always brought up and they have been for quite some time. So don't necessarily completely boil it out. You have to pay attention to all aspects of how this is really playing into the future of crypto and also the future of blockchain, because this will have a profound effect on how blockchain is managed throughout the year. Stablecoin is years. Stablecoins are absolutely a critical aspect of how this plays out for mainly institutional finance, but also in general around retail adoption, because the people need to know that this stuff is safe. That's the core element behind this. Um, and if you look at what Tether says here, it's confirmed stable coins are fully backed. Marshall noted the hedge funds are shorting, yes. Uh, but last month, Tether issued a report confirming its stable coins are fully backed with cash, liquid assets, and other investments. Again, just a report, not necessarily yet to see. Now, granting that it will be a heavy undertaking just to get an audit in place. So it's not like this; these things can just be flipped on. The amount of accounting and the amount of detail that would have to be put into an audit like this would be paramount. So pretty significant. And then, uh, you know, here's, uh, here's the CTO responding. I've, I've been open about the attempts on some hedge funds, obviously he's talked about, but it seemed as though the beginning of the coordinated attack with a new wave of FUD, that was his tweet. And he said, basically, we've unveiled two more stable coins pegged to the Mexican peso and the British pound. Uh, this brings the company's total to stable coins to five. Now, some people could look at this as, um, you know, PR stunts where you do uh, tactics. These are traditional tactics with PR, is you do other things to help pull the focus off of the primary problem. Or you could also look at it on the positive side is that Tether is continuing to do business and continuing to really rock uh, out with new products and innovations. Um, so there is a little bit of, of both things kind of looking at this. As you can see, there's more reporting on this. Hedge funds launch against coordinated attack on Tether, USDT, uh, all again leaning back in there. And if you also listen to even some of the biggest proponents out there, and I just want to play a clip here from Kevin O'Leary, we'll just cut this clip and you can kind of listen to what he has to say about this. So much concern out there about all stable coins, but, but I'm looking at ones that, that maybe couldn't survive an audit and Perhaps if, oh, say if, it, Kevin. Do you, are you talking no, about? No, it's not. It's not right because I don't know with certainty. 
All right, so, I mean, he, he's not saying the name. Uh, the Cornet uh, TV's reporters, they're kind of, hey, come on, just say what you're talking about there. But he kind of nails it on the head here, and that is ones that stable coins that can't survive an audit. Uh, and that is going to be the real scenario that will come to play here. So the real question is whether or not they actually get the audit. Uh, but then being able to get through it, you know, in a manner in which it would be, you know, accepted from the financial community to be able to be one valid and also to be able to kind of reinforce that trust that is needed to really make stablecoins uh, evolve. EU institutions are also setting to discuss crucial crypto regulations this Thursday. We just had a, sh uh, a show about a week or 10 days ago where we had one of the lead analysts on Mika, which is the markets and crypto uh, regulation within the EU. And there was a lot that he talked about in that video. What I would look at is if you want to learn about that, because this has global impact, I think regulation and regulatory guidance will be driven by a lot of what Mika is doing in the EU. So if you're thinking, hey, we're getting ready to see regulation here in the US in the fall, possibly in the Q1 of next year, the likelihood is a lot of that framework may come from things like Mika, even though I know that our own you know, uh, legislators are a little bit more <laughs> unique in that way. Anyway, three main European institutions, this is Council, Parliament, Parliament and Commission, could finalize the details for the two most important regulations in the region when they meet on crypto. Uh, that's happening right now. Uh, and when you look at that, stablecoins is number one on the bullseye, and then the second layer of the bullseye are exchanges. So you look at where Tether sets and the potential of also exchanges kind of connected to stablecoins, and this starts to get very interesting if we see some regulations coming at Tether from the EU side of things. Remember, Tether being very global, uh, even though the U.S. is still one of its biggest markets, the EU is right there in the top three. So that in itself could put some pressures. Granted, we will see most likely a ton of regulatory guidance coming from not only the what's happening with Mika, but also how Tether responds to that, I think will also open up some eyes. Make sure and get your questions in over on the side chat. We will try to get to as many of those as we can. There's quite a few of these uh, for sure. And I'd love to kind of get your input on one, what kind of what kind of stable coin are you guys trading with? You know, are you utilizing USDC? Are you utilizing Tether more? You know, I feel like our audience is very diverse in the sense that you do uh, have the need for trading pairs. You also may also have the need for, uh, you know, that security element, which I think for me that right now kind of leans in a little bit on what's happening with USDC. Even though I will say with Circle, if and I won't get into this too deep, but Circle also has some scenarios that are happening right now. For instance with Circle Enterprise or their overall enterprise custody model that they use for trying to lure in businesses to put uh, US dollars in for USDC and then giving you a certain return. Recently, they had a, a, quite a difference in the interest that is being paid to businesses that are converting their cash to USDC. And it went from 4%, which was about two to three weeks ago, down to 1%. So. Does that mean that we've just seen so much adoption and they don't have to be able to offer that much in terms of yields to lure people in? Or is there something going on there that would cause those kinds of adjustments? That's usually the first thing I look at is when people start reducing benefits. And that is something that is happening right now with USDC. To a tweet here, this is of course coming from Tether to launch GBT, uh, GBPT, which is the uh, British pound sterling. Uh, and this is their launch, of course, of another stable coin. Uh, and then, of course, you've got uh, this guy, the crypto whale, kind of talking about it uh, pretty bluntly. I've said it before. I'll say it again. When Tether collapses, you will not be allowed to withdraw your crypto from top exchanges. Uh, they will halt everything. Prices will plunge and we'll most likely see the largest liquidity history uh, crisis in history. Now, this is something that we've been talking about here for the past, I would say, 30 days or so, maybe even prior to that is really kind of getting you guys pointing towards self-custody. We've talked about trying to get a lot of your primary coins off of exchanges and off of exposed elements. Even, even software wallets, in my opinion, you know, could be at risk here during this period of time. Granted, now everybody's thinking, my gosh, crypto's going to hell. That's not the case. What happens in these kinds of liquidity events 
is very similar to what happens in major banking liquidity events, major uh, securities and exchange uh, major liquidity events. These are just very similar in the sense that it is a much more nascent you know, industry. It's under, what, 400 billion right now with Bitcoin under a, a trillion overall. So the potential here is real that if one more big, big guy drops, and this is something that O'Leary talks about a lot, is he expects one more to fall. Who knows who, who that could be? It could be an exchange. It could be Tether. It could be other aspects of a combined effort from a multitude of small entities that become a, a, a bigger problem. Things like right now, what we're, we're really kind of looking at with Celsius, to a certain extent, Voyager now a little bit on the ropes with their three errors capital scenario. All these are really what we're looking at that causes these effects. And then you've got Sam Bankman basically saying kind of the same thing, and that is looking at secretly at insolvent small exchanges and crypto miners. So who is he really talking about here? Is he, because he kind of talks in code. A lot of times, if you listen to his, not only his comments, he rarely goes on uh, podcasts or interviews because that's too much, I think it's too much depth in the sense of, not that he can't do it, that he doesn't want to reveal too much of his knowledge base of what he knows of what's happening in the industry. I think that's the question here. We could see uh, smaller exchanges starting to play in this or maybe other key exchanges that also could be in here in terms of an insolvency issue, which could have some trickle up effect on something like a tether as well. And uh, a lot happening with this. I do want to thank our sponsor today, and that is iTrust Capital. If you're looking at going in long term and trying to uh, get to one of those scenarios that really kind of positions you from, you know, more of a strategic standpoint from tax purposes, etc. Because there are places you do have to trust your crypto with. What I look at it for is the long-term aspect of something. So remember, when a lot of these places kind of gate their uh, access or, you know, being able to become liquid, you're mostly doing that in scenarios where you need to get access to those funds in a short period of time. Short period of time meaning less than three years. Um, but when you get into crypto IRAs, now you're talking about five plus years and greater to really kind of build on your overall wealth. So if you are looking at long-term wealth building and you're trying to position you know, yourself from a tax position, because I think this is going to be a good year to do that for 2022, make sure and check out iTrust Capital. They do have a funding a reward that you guys can get uh, just by using our link below and clicking that. They have a lot of tokens over there, so you can't miss out on what they're doing. And they do a great job, and they've been around for quite some time. Further into this, this is an interesting tweet right here from, by John Reed Stark. Uh, he's the lawyer at the SEC for 18 years. Here's a fast, effective way to guarantee a way for Tether to quell all the short sellers. Just get a big four, um, you know, accounting for them to conduct the audit, and uh, which if they find it rock solid balance sheet, then boom, you're in. Without that audit, they are just going to be noise. And that is something, they're a big noise right now because they still control a very large percentage of liquidity for the overall crypto market. So it is one that um, people just have to absolutely uh, pay attention to. Here's Luke Land. Hey, Tether is going to be audited. This was all, all the way back to 2014. Every year, every year, every year. So are we hearing just the 2022 version of, uh, you know, Tether 8. <laughs> I guess that would be Tether 8. Make sure and drop your questions in the, we will look at, take a look at a poll as well today, but make sure and drop your questions in over in the sidebar and hit the like button. This is the place that it helps us to really determine, do you like these kind of breakdowns? Are you looking for more of these deep dives? Uh, I'm kind of curious, do you guys like the, when we talk about and show more of the sentiment data, hit the like button if you do like the sentiment data um, or you like the interviews. Maybe that's another one that you guys are into. Um, this is a, really kind of the, the point that they're getting at is um, undergoing a full audit from a top firm. They're pretty straightforward. He says, Euromania top 12 accounting firm will audit the company right now because of the leading uh, four auditing companies are wary of stepping into the relatively unregulated crypto space. Now this, you could look at it as 
two ways. One, you could say, well, let's say that, all right, you, yeah, there's a few of the major audit firms that just feel like they can't, you know, really get this done in a timely or an efficient manner and or more than likely, they don't want to deal with it because it's a hot potato. Uh, but a top 12, I think, would that be enough to quash your concerns if you have them on whether or not tw- Tether is stable and Tether is going to be liquid throughout this bear cycle and into our next bull? Because I think as we see more, you know, more stickiness on crypto and we also see the powerhouse of USDC, because I don't, I don't necessarily see that there's going to be one. I think there is a potential of two good stable coins here to utilize across a, a lot of varieties. But I'm just wondering if that top 12 would be enough for you to say, yep, yeah, these guys are, are for real if they, add, in fact, you know, test out on their audit, provided that they actually do the audit. That would be the other aspect of this, for sure. Bitcoin and Ethereum dominant side stablecoin market caps are, of course, re- reaping the award awards because uh, a lot of people are going into stables if they are in a position where they can exit a trade. The likelihood, obviously, is they're dropping into stables. I'll show you some market caps here in a second just to show how this pl- plays out. But you can kind of see right here, USDC and DT uh, kind of going back and forth. Now, as I said, I talked about this a lot last summer and was really kind of looking at USDCs when we really started studying Circle and, and you know, their launch and kind of the goal. Remember, Circle's very young, uh, definitely in this cycle. Let's go to a live on Coin360 just to see where it is right now. All right, so, yeah, so you've got Circle, our USDC, still holding under, but, it, man, it's just getting very, very close. Let's take a look at the overall market cap. So you can kind of see the market cap cap growth right here over this past year. Uh, That's the month. Let's go to the year. There's the just steady, steady, and then a little bit of a dip right here, which was back in May. And that's when we saw uh, Luna's crash. And then, boom, you started seeing USDC become become the new haven. You compare that to what happened with Tether, also on the one year, trucking right along, and then it's a it's a reverse in uh, process here uh, in May, at the same time where we started seeing a much lower uh, pos- uh, overall uh, condition of the market cap, which of course does put pressure on Tether, which is constantly you know dealing with what we're talking about today. So it's going to be interesting. I, I just now for me one thing I have done, and you know I think I talked about this uh, quite a bit here on the show as I do utilize USDC more so than Tether. Um, I have and do use Tether, but as I said, it is a transitory coin or um, stable coin for me. It's in and out. Uh, It's going to either get converted to Bitcoin or some other major asset, or I'm flipping it to where I can push it into a USDC platform. Um, And that's just the, you know, the the basis that we do that here. So I do it. and it's how I trade. So, you know, it's just something, I don't know if, if that's the case for each of you, but it's the one that I do take on. All right, so here's a uh, TSO Games Tether Watch, no market cap reduction during the night, but their peg price doesn't look too healthy. It's fallen off a cliff compared to the recent change. Obviously, we just showed some of that. Falling faster than Bitcoin has. If I could be a cynic, I'd say they're out of money and is gonna liquidate some more Bitcoin very soon. Uh, they could really kind of get Tether in a very, precarious situation. Again, just looking at their fall off here, I think this is, um, you know, it's a pretty stark difference here if you look at this over the year. I mean, they're almost back to, where were they? That is 66 billion. The last time they had that was right here in September of last year. This Remember, this is pre all-time high, pre-metaverse, pre all things that really exploded in November. And they were at 66 billion there. And here we are, pretty much the depths of the bear market, I would say, even though we, I would say we're on the first 25% of it uh, and already at 66. Uh, and in comparison to you know, where USDC is at 55, I think the flip is going to happen. Question is, does it happen this summer or does it happen this fall? That will be the question. Not that that really matters, but it does matter in terms of overall um, faith in projects because once you start to see that divergence occur and the contagion effect can come into it, 
then you run into the problem of now we have liquidity issues that could start to become a spider effect into a lot of different exchanges where you may be holding both tokens and cash or uh, stable coins. So that's why it's so important for you guys to uh, pay very special uh, atten attention right now. Here's the uh, tether is the final domino when it hits the 40 billion. This is the the mark. I'm actually leaning more towards around 30 billion as a point of no return. 30, 30 billion it will retest the July 13th. That's what we were just talking about. Volume on their market cap. Guarantee it will spiral down to zero. The bubble has popped. Uh, GBPT will crash and GBP uh, just wait for tether and boom, you're going to see it. So That'll be interesting. It could happen right there uh, within London because of the British pound and it's tied to Tether now, British pound, meaning the British pound stablecoin. Let's get into uh, some of the questions. Of course, our, our question and answer session is brought to you by Bybit. If you guys are looking to jump into some new trading platforms and do it in a very unique and creative way, if you're both international, you have those kinds of uh, abilities to do what you have to do to get into Bybit. Uh, you can do that through our links in the description down below. Let's take a look at the poll real quick and see what we've got. Would a full audit by the government solidify trust in USDT? Yes, otherwise USDC wins. Not too much. FUD damage is already there. 25% of you and irrelevant. I trust it either way. 18%. So this is um, the fact that we have 20% that are unwavering. I think that's pretty consistent, even though I see there's people that are probably on the fence with that 50 something percent. Put that pull back up for a second. I want to take a look at that. Because if you look at the top line here, yes, otherwise, USDC wins. That 57 percent, if they had the yes, if it actually happened, I wonder how much of you guys would fall into trusting Tether, um, which would lift that. And you might get to maybe a third, a third, a third, which would be more in line with how this might play out. Let's get over to some questions and uh, we'll kind of roll, roll along here. All right, Crypto JMP, will Tether default take out the major US exchanges? Well, okay, so there, when you have 60 billion on the market right now, the scenario is gonna be just how much is being traded within those and what's pegged against those exchanges. So some, yes, for sure, moderate size exchanges could really feel the heat Again, it will depend on what's happening from a liquidity standpoint within those exchanges in terms of dry powder, who's holding tether uh, and those kind of things, other than the kind of scenario where you go through trading pairs, like something on PionX or you know a scenario like that. What are your thoughts on DAI? I just, you know, right now, tether and USDC are really the only stable coins that I am looking at. Um, and USDC, would I trade in DAI? I would rather trade in, uh, you know, the same thing. I, I, if I'm only if I'm only take stable coins, I'm only going to take USDT and or USDC. Prefer USDC, but in some cases I'll pass through USDT. I still think it's stable enough for now. Uh, but we, you know, we've kind of went around this before. This is not the first time that Tether's been, you know, questioned. What would you say is the best Tether alternative? USDC for sure. Uh, I think now maybe because you need certain trading pairs if you're trying to get to like Binance coins or th something of that nature and you have to get on something like Pionex, which is a trading pair with, directly with Tether. Um, that would be, if you were trying to get to certain kinds of tokens that you needed Tether to do that, then you, you just have no choice. Uh, stable coins will open need to be like money market funds. Uh, mark, max cap, uh, no one will be able to be big enough to bring down everyone. I would agree with that and I think that will be the situation where we see more regulation, most likely coming here from the U.S. And if O'Leary gets his way, I mean, this guy's become kind of the poster child for crypto, at least for stable coins, because I think he sees the potential of this being a intermediary between DeFi and traditional banking um, and how all that comes on, for sure. You know, we're going to have the, the WonderFi team on this week on an interview. So make sure and check out when we uh, drop that video. That's one of Kevin O'Leary's companies. Super chat. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Uh, Paul, do you use, uh, pa no, I don't. Paxos Gold, I do not to safeguard for capital or dry powder apart from USDC. No, right now dry powder is still USDC for me. That's just uh, where I use it. Uh, Jeffrey, what will happen to me uh, 
that okay what will happen to me that bought BTC ETH with USDT is there any disadvantage no unless it's a trading pair that you've done maybe on a I'm asking because you bought some holdings with USDT no I don't think so I'm not exactly sure again not financial advice because I don't know your portfolio and exactly but I buy I have bought um, Bitcoin and ETH with Tether, move it around. It's still, it's Bitcoin and ETH unless you're doing a trading pair. That's a little different. Now you could be holding Bitcoin on say Pionex and be in a trading pair, you know, trade and have some exposure there, but um, not necessarily. USDD is a hell no. Yep, for sure. I think that one is uh, going to be torched with, with uh, a few others that we'll continue to see, but that doesn't have the kind of, it will have some market impact but it won't have the kind of market impact that Tether would have on crypto in general. I mean, we could go into true life support in crypto, which some people would say this is great because we've never seen the era of 2014 all over again. That's essentially what you're talking about here because we're already pre, well, we're now in the 2017 range of our all-time high. Brian, uh, if the market cap uh, tried to roll into USDC, we'll get another issue. We might wire funds outside of my futures account back to my bank and keep my tokens in a cold wallet. Good move. Uh, that's something I've done, you know, quite a bit is, you know, I, I do believe in self-custody. It's something that we practice a lot. Um, but at the same time, you know, you just have to remember if you're holding US dollars, you just know that you have to pay that fee of 8% right now annually to hold that dollar. You know, you're paying 8% in, call it, you know, interest, whatever you want on your own money uh, and go that direction. So, Paul, have we heard a lot about shorting of, yes, yeah, uh, Kim, thanks for coming in on that. We need more ladies here on our show, good women in crypto, which by the way, we have a new host uh, uh, that's on our show, very smart lady that uh, knows a lot about NFTs. So if you guys are into that, make sure and check that show out. Uh, Bresmo, uh, BUSD, uh, withholding USDT for only transfer between exchanges, but uh, to buy USDT, yes, but holding nothing in the good move. Then I think that's a so you're trading in those kind of scenarios where you need to have it to be able to get the trades executed and then you move on. Not a problem. If USDT collapses, this is coming from Ida Lou, um, then I would see a 500. Yeah, you could. No, I don't think you'd see 500 to 1100 Bitcoin. But I know Kiyosaki talks about these doomsday numbers. Sometimes I think Robert gets a little overzealous, but you never know because contagion can set in. Contagion is something that's real because a lot of times, remember, when you get major market crashes, contagion can sometimes set in and it's not the real thing, meaning we get oversold and there's unbelievable market entry positions. And at that point, my friends, cash will be king and it's possible that USDC will be king. Uh, granted, depending on what that looks like. Uh, how, better can, how badly can Tether hurt Algorand? It can hurt it pretty badly. Um, you saw the chart. I would keep a track of the Tether website, and um, let me see if I can pull that back up for you. It's this page right here. If you just go to tether.to, the English version, transparency, click on the USDT, and then you'll be able to see the breakout uh, by the tokens in terms of their uh, current uh, issued status. So you've got Solana, um, here's Avalanche, and then here's Algorand right here. So you can jump into the details on all that, really dive down into how it's, how it's supported, all that good stuff. All right, so let's go on here. Traveling with Mo. What is going on with Luna Classic and UST? You know, there's been a pump on Luna, um, but I just don't touch Luna with a 10-foot pole, and I just don't, you know, I just don't do it. Uh, Tuesdays, USDT on Wax Thoughts. Yeah, there, well, you know, Wax is, uh, it's very interesting, uh, very interesting NFT project. I think that ha they have a lot of validity and, you know, great potential, also great speed. There's a lot of things there. We've had William Klugley on, their CEO, a couple of times. If you want to get schooled on how, that side of the industry works. Check out William Quigley's um, interviews with us here on the show. Just search, you know, wax and you'll pull up our wax interviews. Very astute individual understands exactly. Remember, this guy was the uh, one of the founders of Tether, uh, William Quigley, wax. Uh, hi, Nate. 
Uh, hi, Paul. Still have some USDT with Celsius. What do you think about this situation? Listen, if you can get, if we get out of Celsius, if if there's a possibility in some form of miracle that the bankruptcy courts, which most likely will be the ones that execute on the distribution of funds and assets, um, then you'll just have to be, it, it'll all be based on timing, you know, and I just don't see the Celsius thing unwrapping for quite some time, probably by this time next year, if, if we're lucky. Thoughts on Ver Voyager merging with FTX? I think this would be a really good, uh, it'd be a good news story, finally, for the industry, because I think that FTX is, is definitely uh, one of the power players right now. There's a handful of others, too. But I think FTX is definitely in a good position uh, to kind of take that uh, take that role on. And granted, remember they'll be able to pick up Voyager for a deal. Uh, so, man, there's some great bargains in this market. Kevin Smith, Paul Bear Network. If Tether crashes, uh, it would probably cause coins to crash up, not down. Selling Tether into other coins, maybe depends on what you're holding. Obviously, Bitcoin I think would be uh, stable to a certain extent, but may have some problems becomes because of liquidity issues, which is another factor that plays into this. Exchange, exchanges just need to have more USDC pairs. I would agree with you, Brian, is that there's not enough of that, even though there's a handful of exchanges that do have good trading pairs on USDC. It is very limited. But I think that's the issue that Circle has to deal with over time because they're trying to basically grow a company and at the same time become an enterprise use case for businesses to convert dollars to and get into that. What do you think most, um, here's coming from Brad, what do you think most or all exchanges will temporarily halt trading on USDT collapse? For sure. Yeah, I think, and that was mentioned in, in one of the tweets we talked about here on the show today is that that was an expectation is if Tether were to get into a very precarious situation and we do see a crash or a near crash, we could see some halting or slowing of trades based on liquidity issues depending on the individual exchange itself. FTX is becoming the overlord of crypto. Remember who tried to bail out the uh, banks and the real estate titans in 2008? It was Warren Buffett. So if you think about Sam Bankman and what Warren did at that time, there is selective um, you know, scenarios playing into this that would possibly bail out many of the keys. And that's something that I do think is going to happen for quite some time, is that we're going to see most likely only a handful of really core businesses make it through. And this is, we talk about this all the time, is the issue that in these downturns, especially right now, is it has so much similarity to the dot bombs and even 2008, there's going to be 80, 90% of these companies and projects that do go to zero. Just pay attention to what you guys are doing out there. Make sure, and of course, stay tuned right here and in the community. If you're not are not joined into our diamond circle, you got to get into that. That's the first place that you can enter into our community. Uh, we do a ton of stuff in terms of email communication and also follow me on Twitter. It's at, uh, just at Paul Barron. You'll be able to catch me out there. Of course, you guys make sure and stay around here for our three o'clock because this is going to be a really good one that breaks down Bitcoin, where it's going because it is nearing that uh, 20K. We called a 19K. It slipped in there this morning. Uh, the question is whether it can hold that and does it get a bounce? There are some analysts that are looking at maybe a little bit of a bounce here. Stick around for the 3 o'clock and we'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.